Thanks so much for joining us. Two guests today, two important guests, Tony Award winning actor James Naughton and Gillian Anderson from the Jordan Porco Foundation. We're going to talk about a really serious subject, and that is preventing teen suicide. Um, Gillian, you're working so closely with the Jordan Porco Foundation. Just give me an overall of what this foundation is trying to do. Sure, absolutely. Um, the Jordan Porco Foundation uh, is a young adult suicide prevention organization, and their programs are peer-to-peer. Uh, the mission is to uh, promote mental health and, uh, you know, give hope to young adults and prevent suicide. Uh, it's a very big topic these days, and uh, I was very drawn to the organization um, based on many reasons. And I think that this organization has just been amazing so far. I've been with the Jordan Porco Foundation for a year now. I'm, I've the, I'm the development director. And it's been unbelievable. And you brought in this guy, I James did. Naughton, who's a star <laughs> of stage for many, many years. Why is it that you got involved with this foundation, Jim? Well, I knew Gillian. Uh, we've known each other for 10 years or more. Yeah. And uh, she asked me. And, is that simple? <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's hard to say no to uh, an organization like this. Um, uh, some of the statistics that I've read that were really impressive and frightening, um, 1,100 uh, stud college students every year commit suicide and one in five kids going to college I is either uh, being treated for or diagnosed with depression so when someone says could you just show up and you know maybe uh, MC this gala we're gonna do in the spring I you don't say no to that your kid who was raised in Connecticut and despite your star on the stage and in television you always give back. You always find a way to give back to others in this state. How important is that to you? Um, well, uh, apparently it's, it's important. I've been doing it an awful lot uh, for a, lot, a long time. Uh, but it just seems like a natural thing to do. If somebody asks you for some help and, and the, the cause is a good one, uh, I can't say no to that. I would say that you're a rare breed in your profession. You think so? Yes. I don't know. There are a lot of people who do a lot of good, good stuff. Uh, and you can't take a compliment either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How serious in the day and age in which we find ourselves with it, this taping 18 school shootings, kids being afraid to go to school, um, suicide rates on the uh, upswing, this work that you are doing peer-to-peer makes a huge difference because they understand right they're in the same boat absolutely yeah you know kids talk to other kids it doesn't matter if you have a fantastic family if you're the perfect parent if you've you know raised your children right and you think you have an open relationship with your child um, most likely they will turn to their peers and that's where some of the warning signs are some of the really serious warning signs and again what the Jordan Porco Foundation does that is so interesting is it, it continues the conversation. It helps kids to open up, it teaches kids, it educates kids to look for signs in others um, if they are struggling and they need some help. Uh, and it's uh, something that just will, um, I think, grow in, in the years to come. Uh, based on what we've done so far. It's a very young organization. It's only seven years old. And um, the organization was actually started because Ernie and Marisa Porco lost their son Jordan to suicide. He was a freshman in college and um, they had no idea. They had no idea. Things turned for the worse. Uh, Marisa is actually a clinical um, social worker. You know, I mean, again, it could happen to anyone. And I think, oh gosh, I've used this line so many times, but I really feel so strongly that this is a generation that's going to turn things around. This is a generation that is opening up a lot more, you know, getting rid of the stigma with so many Making issues. Making it okay to talk about. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's okay to not be okay. And a child needs to understand that a young adult you know, I mean, it's hard enough being a teenager, right? But when you are um, in the midst of perhaps you have clinical depression or perhaps you haven't been bi diagnosed with bipolarity yet, um, when it gets to that really dark place and you at least know in the back of your head it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to reach out and ask for help.
Jim, you're instrumental in helping them with this gala that's coming up in April, and it's going to be a really big show. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a gala. It's Broadway. Um, what have you put together for this show? Gillian, what have I put together? <laughs> for this show? We have put together an amazing show. Uh, the very first person I thought of was, of course, Jim Naughton. Again, just done some amazing things in the community over the years, always willing to help out. And we picked a Broadway theme this year, and Jim was the first person I thought Gillian of. Gillian asked me if I would uh, MC it, host it. Um, and um, she's putting together, she, she's doing all the, the real legwork. So I have to show up and I'm. Um, and um, be able to read my cue cards at the right moment. I think, Jim, you probably can do that. I'm just, I'm guessing. Let me, more serious topic. Is there loss in your life that you can relate to this organization at all? Well, I have been fortunate enough not to have lost a child, but I sure uh, can understand that that is, and I've always thought that is the worst loss that any of us can have. Uh, I do know what it's like to lose a loved one. I lost my wife uh, nearly five years ago after a four-year battle with pancreatic cancer. But losing a child is the worst, and I think everybody recognizes that. Yeah. So uh, when you're asked to, to do something for that issue, um, I don't know how you say no, and uh, we'll be there. We, and I think we're going to put on a pretty good show from what I see that Gillian has accomplished so far. To, yeah, and let me let me correct tell that. Anna, tell Anna about I'll, that. I'll tell you about the event, but again, I've been with the organization for a year. The staff is 10 people in total, and they are amazing. They have done this event from scratch for the past six years. It's an annual event, and, you know, I when I first started, I kind of sat back a little bit and watched everybody in action, and I could not believe the amount of work that went into this gala. And, you know, we're talking about uh, young adult suicide. However, the gala is very uplifting and emotional and, um, you entertaining. know. Entertaining. Entertaining, absolutely. Well, it moves the topic forward in yes. a way in which people can have a good time but address something very serious. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I want to ask you about your daughter, Abby, whom you lost not so long ago. Mm. Um, your daughter took her own life. How are you doing? How is your family doing? How is your son doing? Oh, how, how, you. Do you, how do you get put one foot in front of the other after that happens? Uh, there's days when I can explain it and there's days when I can't explain it. Uh, so Abby was a sophomore in high school. She was 15 years old and she had been diagnosed with clinical depression about a year and a half before she died, which was completely shocking to our family. You know, again, we just had this little unit, my son and my daughter and my husband, and all very active. And uh, when we found out that she had clinical depression, it just was very reeling. And, you know, you're thrown into this uh, tizzy of trying to learn so much about, you know, what is clinical depression? I didn't know what it was even. I didn't, I had no idea. Um, and, and we thought and, and she was a, a peer, and she appeared to be a very happy uh, successful yeah. cheerleading young woman yeah I have a smile on my face whenever I think about her um, we lost her three and a half years ago and she was the most outgoing uh, collected friends like you wouldn't believe she was very sensitive to Pretty others vivacious yeah yeah and she was I hate to use the word fearless, but she was. She was a flyer. She wanted to do everything. I mean, I I could hardly keep up with her. She wanted to do so much, and she was just, she was our world. She was our world, as any parent would would think about their own child. And we thought we had a handle on everything. We really did. You know, hindsight is horrible. Um, Abby did not show a lot of symptoms, and when she did. They were very, very minor, and you couldn't distinguish them from regular teenage behavior. And she, um, you know, she just, we had therapy, we had medication. Um, she knew how to hide it really well. And the last therapist that we had, probably about five months before she died, said, you know, you're doing so great. You're doing so great. You don't even need to see me anymore. And I believed that. I, we all thought she was doing better. Mm. 
Uh, this is why it's so important to talk about things, to be open. Um, you know, clinical depression is a little bit different than than just having a bad day. Mm -hmm. um, and not every child that uh, takes their own life has clinical depression. They might be bipolar, uh, there might be anxiety involved, but all of these things, um, you know, suicide is preventable. It, it, you can prevent suicide. Um, a little bit more complicated when they're younger, but, but suicide is the second leading cause of death in children ages 14 to 24. And I think that statistic is so staggering and I didn't learn that until after. I think you're doing a great service in that you have to talk about it and the mental health stigma has got to go away. Absolutely. What we're, we're not, you know, I, I say this all the time, if you have a broken arm or a broken wrist, you get a, you get a cast, right? But the first places we, we cut are mental health mm -hmm. clinics and issues and doctors. Why do we do that? Yeah. I mean, if you are not a well-being person, um, and look at how much mental health is not being treated. Right, right. Yeah, there's you no were, fast track. You were on it with your daughter. We, we thought we were. However, again, you know, it, it ebbs and flows. And, and we truly believe she was doing better for many different reasons. And, you know, I think, again, it just, it spiraled without us noticing, without us seeing it. And for all I know, it could have just spir spiraled within, you know, a couple of days. But yeah, there's no fast track. I learned, you know, we all as a family learned as much as we could. We were open about it. We talked about it. We actually did, you know, one, one of the things that people don't understand is you can ask somebody, are you thinking of taking your own life? That, that's a really important question. If you have a gut feeling about something, then you need to say something. You know, a couple of the other statistics that I read uh, recently, I think it's 17% of, mm -hmm. of children in college or in high school, I guess it's college, age kids, uh, consider it. Four, one out, one four, out of ten, four, one out of ten contemplate suicide 14, as a college Fourteen percent of them talk about it with, with their peers, right. and something like eight percent of them mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Has it always been this way, or are the pressures just so great now? Do we know? Um, I'm, I'm not an expert in that area, but I do believe that we are talking about it a little bit more. The stigma is still definitely there. Um, are there a lot of other pressures today on kids? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we can talk social about bullying, media doesn't social help. media, you know, all of those You things. can't make any mistakes without somebody taking a picture of it and right. telling the entire world. Right. So, right. Well, you know, as a grandparent, I have, I have a couple of young grandkids, three of them. You, you worry about stuff like that. Uh, I don't recall that when we were kids, uh, certainly not when I was a kid, there weren't a lot of uh, mass shootings in schools. And there wasn't the kind of attention being paid because we have a lot of children taking their own lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a fairly recent development. And being on the stage, did you ever deal with actors that had issues this way and got help, didn't get help with mental health issues? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And maybe, um, you know, I'm not asking you to name names, but again, I, you know, you're, you're on the stage, you're this, you're that, you're not going to run and tell somebody, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm not doing well. And uh, sometimes you can't express what mm -hmm. anxiety and depression mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. two, of, uh, two of the people that I worked with whom I really uh, held in very high esteem, uh, uh, one guy and one uh, lady, they each uh, had cancers that they didn't address because they were afraid to, and they died as a result. In both cases, I think, if they had addressed them, um, they'd still be here because they were the kinds of cancers that were uh, su survivable. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's a form of a depression or a mental, I don't know if we call it a mental illness, it certainly is a mistake. Mm -hmm. And it's the kind of thing that had they sought um, had they sought mm -hmm. some help? Mm -hmm. My wife was a, a social worker, and that, those were the kinds of people that she was constantly dealing with and trying to help, because that's what social workers do. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, those kinds of things can have, happen, and you, I've, I knew them well and worked with them and missed them. That's a really good analogy. I think, again, we need people to understand that mental illness is something that is... Um, 
uh, part of a lot of families every day. You either know someone or it could be part of your family. And again, there's many layers, but um, it, it's so important to get rid of that stigma. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, um, you know, uh, look the other way if somebody, you know, did have cancer or did have mm -hmm. a broken arm. You know, you fix these things. You try to fix these things. Let me I, ask. Can I ask Gillian absolutely. a question? Absolutely. So, Gillian, um, how how do you feel about uh, this new job that you have, being <laughs> development director for this organization? That's Seriously. A, that's a really amazing question. Thank you. Um, I absolutely first of all I never ever thought I would ever kind of switch careers I've always done fundraising but when you're affected personally and you see what the issues are and they're right in front of you you can't help but want to make a difference and do something this is what this is what uh, Ernie and Marisa Porco did when they started the organization they felt so helpless and then started reading statistics about what is going on and you want to you want to make a difference you want to save somebody from the absolute pain but I think that shows strength I think a lot of parents can't wade down in that after the loss of a child they either want to pull away because they they can't cope <clears throat> yeah there's, there's something about human nature I think that makes yeah. you a lot of us do that when things get a little sticky or right. maybe not too attractive yeah. or right tough and th and she's right there in the forefront. Yeah. And I was propelled. I mean, I just, of course, you want to know why. You know, you, you uh, we had an amazing community that came together. I mean, you're reeling. You're absolutely reeling. You're never, ever the same person when you lose a child. I just know that I had 15 amazing years with my daughter. And for me to even say that out loud, I'll wake up in the morning sometimes and say I'm, I'm living in a nightmare. But I want to honor her. I want to keep her memory alive. She taught me so many amazing lessons in her 15 short years, and this was just such a natural fit. Uh, when I spoke, when I met with the organization for the first time, Marisa obviously lost her son Jordan, and Matt, uh, our COO, uh, lost his daughter Jenna as well. So the three of us bonded over losing a child, and they were doing these amazing programs that really have taken off. And think of how many people you've already saved and will save as this foundation goes on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I would love, can I mention the programs that Absolutely. we do? Because they're so exciting. And, and they're growing. They're growing. They are growing. Again, the organization's uh, pretty young. Uh, Fresh Check Day is a signature event that started. Um, very first event was on the campus of Eastern Connecticut State University. Uh, it grew regionally and now we're across the country. We're in over 32 states across the country hosting these events on college campuses. And fresh check means what? It, you're checking in on your mental health. So what we're doing is we're connecting college students with the mental health services on campus in a very stealthy way. It's a fair-like event that is created and there's a lot of different departments with the university or the college that uh, get involved and you know all of a sudden kids are discovering this big event going on and uh, it and it's okay to be there looks like a lot of fun right yeah. so it kind of lures you in and there's therapy dogs and there's food trucks and there's music and there's yoga all these things going on and then we have these amazing boots you know you're checking in on your mental health you're uh, maybe talking about your therapist over here or maybe we're talking about the uh, LBGTQ community over here and it really, um, pretty soon, all of these kids are all talking about some of their own issues. And I cried the first time I ever went to a Fresh Check Day because I had been talking about them for a while. And when I went and I started telling some of the students that I was with the Jordan Porco Foundation, they just opened up right away, opened up right away. And I know that we have saved lives. It's so, so important to keep these conversations going. I want to thank you both for being here and enlightening us about what Jordan Porco Foundation is doing and the gala is going to be great. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, Gillian. Thanks, Anne. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution and find the piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor.
keep talking to the grocery store of my mind Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the nice ride